Good evening. It is such a joy and an honor to gather together with you this evening as we come together to celebrate the birth of our Savior, to come together and share in this collective memory of service and worship and community. In this season leading up to this night, we have been hearing the good news from all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, because we have needed good news. And that's what gospel actually means. We have heard stories of courage all along our journey, of people who have sung out songs of hope, love, joy, and peace. Our luminaries have been a witness to the light we believe has come and is coming. Tonight we return to the story of Jesus' birth as it is told in the Gospel of Luke. This account is the narrative we read again and again on this holy night. For this author gives us the most beloved details. We yearn to see the scene play out, to hear the music of the angels, to feel the rush to the manger, to see what the star that pierces the sky has come to proclaim. So we desire to believe the good news of all the messengers that is the culmination of humanity's pain of birth. Do not be afraid, for unto us a sign has come that will be to all people on earth peace. Over the last four weeks, our theme song has helped us remember that we can believe in God and that God is with us, even and especially in the midst of hard times. I believe in the song. We believe in the presence of the Emmanuel, God with us. 
This is the night we celebrate that the holy came in human form to be light in our lives, to speak to us, touch us, comfort us, and call us. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpse of heaven on earth and the faces and the light of those around us, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when our view is obscured by clouds of doubt, you have ignited the flame of hope, love, joy, and peace within us. Let us glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Amen. As we turn to the scriptures, I invite you to hear these words of the prophet Isaiah in the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of a messenger who proclaims peace, who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God rules. Listen, your lookouts lift their voice. They sing out together. Right before their eyes, they see the Lord returning to Zion. Break into song together, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people and has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in view of all the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen our God's victory. For all of Advent, we have called on the power of music that inspires those who hear it to a brighter tomorrow. It has been a difficult time during the pandemic since singing had to be restricted. In its absence, we have been reminded just how much we enjoy singing together. Indeed, music has often been the soundtrack of hope. We enjoyed a season of music appreciation, as well as reflection on the power of music, including our Advent Film Festival that has highlighted the role of music in creating change and ending injustice. Tonight's anthem is one of my favorite new Christmas songs composed by contemporary Christian recording artist Lauren Daigle, Light of the World. Interestingly, she shared in an interview that she actually composed this song over Skype with her writing colleagues. She was physically distancing before it was even required. Daigle shared, as the writing process progressed, I was thinking about the 400 years between the Old and New Testaments in the Bible, when God was silent for 400 years. There was stillness in the world. People were searching. 
I wonder how that longing was for people living then. To be honest, it kind of reminds me of today and the longing in people. She wrote that back in 2014, but it's even more timely today. We are all longing for connection, to see and hug those we love, and to be with one another, to celebrate, worship, and sing. In John 8, Jesus wrote, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us have faith in Jesus' promises as we celebrate his birth and know that we are each filled with the light of life and are invited, no, expected, to share that light with the world. <laughs> Now from the Gospel of Luke in the second chapter. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city, called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage, and who was pregnant.
And while they were there, the time came for Mary to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, do not be afraid. Look, I bring you good news, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what had been told about this child and everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. committed these things to memory and pondered them carefully in her heart. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
please pray with me. May the meditations of our hearts and our minds be holy and pleasing to you. And may the words of my mouth be those of yours, our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Tonight doesn't look the way we expected it to. We had thought that we would have a Lent to remember that would end with a hallelujah chorus here as we came back to church for Easter morning. When that didn't happen, we thought, oh, in the fall, we'll be back. Well, surely by Christmas, we will be back in our places, in our familiar pews, with our friendly faces peering up at us. We will hear our bells, our choir, and our various groups come together on Christmas Eve as they share their talent and the message of hope and love at Christmas. We would gather for the meal around our table together, and we would be in tears after so many months apart and finally being gathered together and sharing the bread and cup with one another. But that isn't what tonight looks like. I am preaching to an empty sanctuary. While our family is gathered for communion, it is only us here, not our church family. But, but there is still good news. No matter what is going on around us, no matter how high the numbers get in our county or how COVID exhausted we are, no matter how zoomed out we feel, Jesus is still born. Let me say that again. No matter what else is happening around us, Jesus is still born. Jesus is still in the manger. Nothing, nothing, not even COVID-19 can stop the birth and the celebration and proclamation of that birth from all the mountains. We might not be together tonight. We might not even be celebrating with our extended family. Christmas gifts might still be in transit in the mail. Maybe we didn't even decorate this year or make all the cookies that we're used to. Maybe you did the other end and did it all and more than you usually do because why the heck not? You want this year of all years to be one that people remember as so you've gone all out. Whatever your Christmas looks like this year, Jesus is still born. As I read Isaiah, I could imagine that the people returning to their devastated homeland was us as we hopefully thought we would return to this building on Easter. Then we hoped to have it Christmas Eve. But hear what Isaiah says. They will sing with joy as they return. Even though nothing around them is the same, they will sing. Tonight, even though nothing is the same, nothing is as it should be or as we expected, as we hoped, we are still singing and we are still gathered together to acknowledge that the Son of God has been born. The Son of God is in, is in a stable with cow poop stinking up the barn. The screams of Mary are heard by the sheep bleeding in fear of what's going on around them. The shepherds stood outside tending their flocks as an angel came to them. Every year I am humbled by the fact that God comes to us in such a way that is messy, dirty, loud, and even smelly. But this year, this year that has literally turned the world upside down, I sit and think, well, of course that baby was born in a stable with the donkeys and cows nearby. Of course the shepherds who were afraid of sheep being stolen were the first to know of our Savior's birth. Of course, because this is the year that the unexpected happens. That the old ways of hate are being revealed. 
that the old ways of learning or teaching to the tests aren't the best way, that looking after our neighbors means showing love and staying home instead of doing our typical Christmas, doing our typical carols, our typical cookie exchanges, our typical gatherings at this time of year. We worshiped Easter sunrise as the sun rose at a park, just as Mary and the gardener would have done. Tonight in our own homes, we are reminded that there was no room for Mary, the mother of God, as the baby Jesus was born. Yet, yet the angels still sung to the shepherds. Yet the birth still happened. Did it happen as they had expected? As they had planned? As they had hoped it would? I doubt it. Any first time mother would want trained medical professionals at her side, not an inexperienced father and bleeding cows. But, but it happened and it was dirty and it was messy and it was beautiful. We have had to change and adapt a lot this year and make things happen that we never expected. There has been a steep learning curve that even after nine months, we're still learning. Because as we've said before, they didn't train us for this in seminary. But in the same way, Mary had to wrap her head around carrying the Son of God when she had laid with no man. We too have worked through those birthing pains and now have something that brings joy, hope, and love to one another even if that's not what we wish we could be doing right now, because we're not in our pews, we're not in our church, we're not standing and looking at our beautiful Christmas decorations. Even if this year is not what we thought it would be, even if we're not shoulder to shoulder listening to music, or tilting our candles as we light our candles to sing Silent Night. Even if this year is the first year in so many years that we've not done our live nativity, this year we have overcome obstacles and we worship virtually. We've continued to provide food to the Second Mile Shop and other places that are in desperate need because of the food insecurities of our community. We have held, helped keep the lights on and the internet flowing for so many families so that kids could continue to do their studies so that the power didn't go out on a cold night. We have not stopped being the church just as COVID-19 could not prevent the birth of Christ. We are still able to sing Silent Night and lift our voices high in celebration, even if it's from our home. Our listening to the beautiful arrangement put together by our choir, that is what I'm going to remember from this year. That no matter what has been thrown at us, no matter how much has been revealed about who we are as a country or as a people, we here at Christ United are still the people of God, and we are still being the church. Even with our doors shut, we will still be the church and love of God to those in need. We will still sing praises even as we mourn the community connection and long for our pew. Even in the midst of all this, we still can come together and celebrate the cry of a newborn babe that are blending with the breeding, brooding noises of sheep, the moos of cows, and ornery, noisy horse and donkeys. This is the God that we serve and follow, the one who broke into the darkness and entered in the most humble, and vulnerable stage of a baby to show the love that only God could be capable of. And we are called to protect that baby 
and to love in the midst of all odds this child that has been born to us tonight. How could we ever doubt that we follow an amazing God when even in the midst of this year, we know without a doubt that love prevails. We know without a doubt that we are loved and that God would give God's own son to show that love to us and to the world each and every day. Tonight, I feel that the table that has been set is a meal so much more than our usual meal, that in the sense that this is more important because it's Christmas Eve, nor in the season that something magical is going to happen that you have never experienced. No, tonight, more than ever, I feel this table is a reminder A reminder that while we continue to long to be together, to eat and nourish ourselves, for we know not how long it will be until we can return to this place. Tonight we eat as a reminder that as we yearn to lift our voices high in song, united, we are still able to do so, though we are apart. Tonight, as we eat, we remember the 40 years the Israelites wandered the desert, worried about what they would eat and drink. And we know not when our journey will end, and we will return to our promised land. Tonight, we drink remembering the joy that Isaiah reminded his people of, that when they returned, there would be so much joy and an abundance of praises to God. Tonight we eat because we know not how long this separation will last. But we have hope and the foreknowledge that it will end. And when it does, we need to be nourished from this table so that we can continue to sing praises to God and continue to be the church to this community in this time and place. To God be the glory. Amen. According to the Gospels, that night of Christmas Eve was a night filled with music and light. From the heavenly choirs of angels singing praise to God, filling the shepherds with fright as they were blinded by their brilliance and the noise that they created in their singing, to the songs of celebration that we sing every year at this time that celebrate the birth of our Savior, our friend, our Lord, and our King. Tonight is also a night that we mark by giving. As we remember the coming of Epiphany, the three kings, the three magi who came to see the newborn child, the newborn Messiah, and they gave of their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, In the traditions of the early church, one of the gifts of the offering that was given in every service was a gift of bread and a gift of wine so that all those gathered might participate in that meal which Jesus commanded above all others to treat as sacred and holy and to share with one another every time they gathered and to do so in memory of him. Tonight, the bread and the wine are here at our table. Tonight, you have with you the elements for your celebration of communion that are most comfortable and appropriate for you, whether it be bread and grape juice, bread and wine, whether it be whatever you may have. We invite you to come to this table. We also invite you to make tonight another night filled with music and light. A night where we celebrate, even in the midst of everything that threatens to darken our joy. Tonight, we invite you to give freely whether it is to the Christmas fund, whether it is to the Christmas joy offering, whether it is to this congregation and the ministries that it supports, 
whether it is simply to your next door neighbor who needs a plate of cookies to brighten their day. Give freely, give generously, give knowing the gift that we, each of us, have received this night, the night that we celebrate Christ's birth. sunrise and sunset, of sound and silence. You formed a, within us your love song and breathed into us the breath of life. Sometimes our voices are choked off and we cannot find your melody, but you keep the bass line humming, waiting for us to rejoin the chorus. You show up in the worst of times, offering us the way to freedom in you. Your voice breaks through in prophets whose songs wake us up to the kingdom you desire. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Jesus Christ, breaking forth into light from the blessed darkness of a womb, he brought light that illuminated a path so we could see our way to more beloved community. Your spirit anointed him to raise his voice, to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners, and invited us to do this too. Born into a world of suffering, he suffered. Born into a world of senseless death, he died into a world that needed hope, he rose, delivering 
us and proclaiming light and life, the triumphal coda of life's song. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always. In the power of your word and Holy Spirit, holy luminary lighting our way. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us your love and light so that our hearts may be broken open for the world and our lives poured out in silence and service. No one is saved till all are healed as Jesus on the mount like the lilies of the field. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Mix our voices in harmony with each other until we sit at the same table and sing in the same choir in your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The bread of life body of Christ, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Take, eat, do these in remembrance.
remembrance of him until he shall come again. We follow where the Christ has led to table that for all is spread and no one sitting at the head but deeper love in wine and bread let us pray Almighty God, as you have fed and nourished us with your body and blood, so strengthen and empower us to go to fill this night with music and light, to be your light to a world in need, to a world that has suffered so much darkness this year. Let us celebrate together this the night that we remember the birth of your Son, our Savior, that you became flesh and dwelt among us, that we might truly know your eternal love. We pray these things together in the name of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. to the classic moment of every Christmas Eve, the moment to light our candles and sing Silent Night. We have wondered this year how we could possibly recreate a sense of normalcy in this moment for us. We wondered how we could go through it with the joy we usually feel on this night, having lost so much this year. 
No, it's not the same. And we know that because of the people we have lost, the jobs and security we have lost, that it will likely not ever be the same again. Surely every year we will remember this moment when we thought perhaps light and song would elude us. But here we are. We will light our lights and we will have our song. Just like those soldiers in World War I, I sang across enemy lines. Everything stopped for a short while as the message that all is calm and bright prevailed above the dark and violent night of the world. We have been sorely divided on many things. We are devastated by our losses. We are tired and we are not so calm. But for this moment, this night, let us remember that we are not alone and that we believe that the music and light of God's promises come again and again. Hope for a better tomorrow, love that works for a more equitable world, joy that wells from a place deep within us, and peace that offers us the assurance we need. invite you to raise your candle high for our benediction tonight. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. 
And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the good news that Christ is born among us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of hope, love, joy, and peace. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that light alive for you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.